Hi, I'm Sunny Goldberg, and welcome to Know Your Neighbors. Today, we are doing something we've never done. We are celebrating a very special birthday with a phenomenally special centenarian, Ms. Louise Levy, and her daughter, Lynn Nydorf. I cannot thank you enough for coming to talk to me. We are using Lucy and Leo's cookies and um, banana muffins to celebrate, but I am more than excited to find out about your life. And I want to thank you for coming and tell me how, I mean, you are 109. That's correct. Were you born in the United States? I was born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1910. Wow. 1910, okay. And your parents came from? My parents were both born in Pennsylvania. Wow. <laughs> my mother in Titusville and my father in Tidio. My goodness. So you're, uh, uh, what, fourth? Hundred percent American. Hundred percent. But, but tell them, Mom, why your father came to America when he did. That was my grandfather. Your grandfather. Oh, your grandfather. Hey, my grandfather <laughs> came, came from Germany to avoid the military. Okay. And so you were in Cleveland. You, uh, your father uh, was an artist. That's correct. And you moved to New York for his business? We moved to New York because I had a brother 10 years older than me. And for some reason, he couldn't find a job in Cleveland. I don't remember or I didn't know why. But I had an uncle in New York City who was ma general manager and vice president of Warner Brothers. Huh? And he said to my, br my brother, if you come to New York, I'll give you a job. So he and his wife moved to New York. Wow. And then he gave my parents no peace until and I they followed. came, that you followed. So, and your, your father was an artist. He did the uh, movie. He did the original of the billboards that were on the roads the great big ones sure. and the smaller ones in front of movie, the movie theaters. theaters. Yeah. And Louise, you as a youngster, I mean, everybody says, uh, uh, today I was talking with my grandkids again, and they said she had no cars, she had no, did she have electricity? I, tell us about when you were. My here. mother had no electricity. She lived from no electricity to see the first man in space. Can you believe that? Oh my! I God. thought nobody would ever live such a long span. I have learned to <laughs> change my mind. How old did your mother? How long did your mother live? She lived to ninety-four. Oh, she was a young young thing when. But she said goodbye to my father about fourteen times because she was not strong and he was strong as an ox, and she outlived him by twenty years. Oh my God! So. When you were young, there, you were very young with the First World War. What were you, three, five? I was eight when it was over. When it was over, wow. And, and um, what kinds of things did you do? I mean, you didn't have television. You had radio. Not then. Not then. <laughs> no, not yet. So what was your, what'd you do? Just play outside? Play, played outside, roller skated all summer. Play jacks. Oh, play jacks. We <laughs> play jacks, right, Lynn? Did you play hopscotch? Yes. <laughs> wow. And then you, the, you went through the First World War. Then the Second World War, you were... Second World War, I was married. Yeah. Uh, and you were living in New York. Living in New York. And I was fortunate by some strange coincidence that my husband wasn't drafted. Oh. So we were very lucky. Wow. It's because I think the story, as I was told, my father was the sole support of two families. Uh -huh. he, his father. That wasn't the reason. No? No. <laughs> what was the reason? The reason was Maybe. that he went to the, he never got a thing that everybody else got a number to or a, a number yeah. and everybody said he kept saying i better go get one everybody said don't be crazy don't go <laughs> so so, so he waited more. until 
He, w he w was in a business that he went to Chicago in January every year, and it was time to go to the show. So he went to the draft board and asked for permission, hold up his being called Tell until me. he got back. So they said, go ahead, don't worry about it. He came back, and he never heard from them. And again, he said, I better go to the draft board. And everybody That's said, right. don't be crazy. <laughs> That's so funny. So he waited until it became a, a law that you had to carry a card on you. And then, he, then he went to the draft board. And they were shocked that he was still there. Somebody put his papers, papers away, and they forgot That's all about him. So very we, lucky. We were very fortunate. But you said that during that time, you listened to FDR, right? I oh, mean, sure. Every night that he was on, we used to sit in front of the radio and listen. Wow. Were you um, nervous? I mean, did you have any relatives in Europe or? No. No. But you listened. I mean, you must have had relatives who were fighting. No. No. <laughs> wow. So you really, <coughs> that's an amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And how did you get to Larchmont? Um, both children were born in, in the city, and when it came time for school, mm. we registered my son in a school in the neighborhood where we lived, and I don't know, for some reason I wasn't satisfied with that, and we started to go house hunting. In and the ended up in Larchmont. Wow. And you lived in Larchmont for a very long time. 52 Li years, I think. I think they bought the house in Larchmont when I was two, so like in 1951. And they lived in that house until a few years after my father died. So wow. many, Five many years. So you raised both Ralph and Lynn. Lynn. They went to what? Uh, we went to Chatsworth. We could walk to Chatsworth from our house on Stuyvesant Avenue. And those were days when you could, you felt safe enough to mm -hmm. walk to school without having to have your parent with you. Wow. And then you went to uh, the Maranek High, High School. There, there wasn't was no hom There was, was no, no homics. We right. went to the junior high and then to Mimarinick High School. Wow. And at one point, the junior high was in the town center, right? Or uh, no? No, the no. junior high was on... Um, it was someplace completely what, The high school was on Palmer. Right. And the junior high was on the Post Road. And oh, then they and then joined they those two structures. Wow. That became the high school, and they built homics. And all this time, you were working, correct? Right. And no, I wasn't working when the children were, were growing young. up. Okay. No. So I didn't start working until um, they went off to college. Wow. And then I went and did temporary work. You know, for your husband? For a couple of after, no, that was oh. with, I worked for one of the boat yards. Wow. Uh, like Michael's, I think. Yeah. Yeah. In Mimarinac. Michael's just, is still there. Just to have something to do of an afternoon. Um, but I was going to say, you were talking before about. Uh, the high school? Larchmont. Uh, the kids um, were, went to Chatsworth. And we did high school. Oh, I was going to say I went to four graduations at Mamaroneck High School. Ralph and Lynn and, then and both Lynn's both. two children. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, so my God. Both, yeah. What a tradition. Yeah. And, 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 that, and both of my children were in the Mamaroneck High School theatrical program. So my mom and dad would come to all the pace performances which was, you know, very exciting. That's so nice for them to have that. I hope I could possibly live long enough to just see a couple of those things. Right. Um, also, your husband, Levy and Sons, correct? I Levy Sons. I Levy Sons. Was, is a local um, business or where is it located? Well, it, he, had a, he had a showroom down on Fifth Avenue, down way down ah. in the 20s. 
and uh, a big showroom, and the buyers used to come there. And then twice a year, he went to a show in Chicago in January oh, and in like Atlantic City show. in yeah, July. I, know. I did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, when it got to a point where, when, where the buyers weren't coming into the showroom anymore because they were placing all their orders at the shows, he decided it was ridiculous to spend the money for that rent, and we moved the office up to our home. Oh, to rent. So you and I worked with him there. You worked with him there, and that was till you were ninety-nine, correct? Well, and then well, she worked. Well, he died, and then I worked for Bruce. Oh, right. Exactly. And then a local person bought my father's business. The thing, my father's right. business, was, there were actually people vying for it, and the reason is because he had been in the business for so long and it had been his father's business before him, he had a spot in that Chicago, I guess it was McCormick Place, is that right? Right, right, right. With all, like, huge companies to the right and his left, like Mobile and... and Everybody wanted that so spot. So people wanted his spot at the show. And so you knew Bruce Hoffman, uh, God bless him, who bought the bill of the... Well, I knew Bruce from the time he was a little boy. We lived on the same street. Oh, it is, that is so... It really is six, not it is six, six it's, it's not six. degrees yeah. or whatever. Right. And so when Bruce bought the business, he wanted you to stay. He said he, he you were, you were the business. He called my son to extend his sympathies when my father, my husband died. And he said, by the way, what is your mother doing ah. with the business? I'm looking to buy a small business. Because at that time, he was working in down south, one of the yeah. states. I forget uh, which one. Uh -huh. And he wanted to be back in Larchmont. Right. So, and that's how that happened. Wow. And uh, when I was with Bruce last uh, few days ago, he said he always thought, you would push him out the door <laughs> in a wheelchair. He said, you were the most amazing woman. And uh, he was very appreciative for all of your input. You know what I said to him? I talked to him on the phone right before Perry died. And he said he was working to try and figure out how to keep the business. I had called him to see if he was still in business, because I hadn't heard, heard from, from him a for a long time. Right. He used to take me out every year for lunch for my birthday, and all of a sudden, yeah. I wasn't hearing from him. So I called, and uh, he said, now I lost my train of thought. I do it all the time. About no wanting to keep the business oh, going? Oh, he was trying to figure out how to keep the business going after he dies. Oh, God. Oh, God. Well. That's the past. Let's talk about the present. Everybody wants to know. You're 109 years old. You live now at? The Osborne. The Osborne. You're very happy there? Very happy there. And you're a very busy woman. What do you do there? I go to stretch class three mornings a week. <laughs> I play bridge three afternoons a week. Um, I used to take Tai Chi, which I can't do anymore. Okay. I took that for nine years. And the woman who taught me Tai Chi is now working at Atria. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And friends of mine live there, and, and they are in her it's, class it's for a, It's a very nice place. I, I had a, a friend who lived there. In what, what about my mother's forgetting? that she um, runs the documentaries the on right. Saturday, which, which is kind of a little technical. And so certainly, I don't know where she got the tech skills to do that. Did someone teach you how to yeah. do them? Um, wow. Well, I ran the movies for years before, <laughs> before we had the computer. But I can't remember how we did it then. Maybe it was VCRs Who then. Who knows? My goodness. I can't remember. So you do their documentary program. I Every Saturday I run the movie. Fantastic. And who chooses it? There's a committee. Okay. And you said something very important to me. Everybody said, ask her, ask her, what is it about longevity? How do you, what do you do? Uh, what do you eat? 
I have no, nothing special, no special? Special to tell you how I lived this long. The only thing I can think of that might have helped it is that when I was in my 40s, they put me on a low cholesterol diet and gave me pills for the cholesterol because they were off the chart. The triglycerides and the cholesterol. And, I, and I'm a very um, disciplined. disciplined person. So you, and I you stuck to the diet. Okay. I ate no meat for many years. Oh, my vegan husband will be very happy to hear that. <laughs> Um, no fats, you know, minimum. Uh, and you take no, no butter. I use a butter substitute. What olive do you oil. do? You you take no medicine, Louise? No, no medicine. Because also no sugar. In she ninety eat sugar. In ninety six, when I was ninety six, my doctor sent me to a hematologist because I was very anemic, and he said stop all medications. And the only one I was taking was the, for the cholesterol, so I stopped. I don't take anything. <laughs> That's, and you also said something very important to me, because girlfriends are very important. You said to me, you have some very dear girlfriends, and you keep each other alive. I mean, you, you're very important to one another. Well, the closest one I had moved in when I did, but she's been gone for yeah. any number of years. She has four sons. She had four sons, one of whom lives in Portland, Oregon. He calls me every year for my birthday. Oh. And when he comes east, he comes to see me. Wow. And you still have a couple of really good friends left at the Osborne, correct? Well, and you, you know, I've picked them up along right. the way because the old ones die and they're new ones. But, and and but she's, she's also a mentor for... Uh, but she also had a group of friends, you know, her... Larchmont group of friends, you know, they're not all still alive, but every year they take her out for her birthday. Yesterday, three of them took me to lunch at Panettiere. Oh, how nice. And I've been... You probably I've know I've been some knocked of out ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. I understand you've spent... Your birthday's November 1st, and you've spent almost every day celebrating. Right. Time. And and uh, Lynn said it may have been an overdue. Might, right, right. Next, neck at 110, we're gonna. It's gonna be lower key. At 110. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it's so funny. You told the story about a woman who came up to your mother and right. literally just wanted to. Well, you know, it's been an adjustment for me, kind of, to have everybody make such a fuss about my mother because she's just my mother, you know. <laughs> but but um, but people are just, you know, all my friends want to meet her. I think people, not everyone has ever seen someone no. who's 109. So she's sort of like a... A marvel to people. It's funny, she was in a, you were in a store somewhere? We oh. were in CVS, and somehow we were doing something, and it was part of the conversation that my mother's age came up, and one of the women, like, started to cry and wanted to touch her, <laughs> like she had some kind of holy attribute. Or maybe good luck. Right, <laughs> right. You know, so people, and also children. Oh, yeah. Children are very uh my mother's done a lot of interviews at the local elementary school she did one oh, at chatsworth yes. and people have interviewed her because children are sort of fascinated about what her life was like when she was a child now your family you've got two i have two children, children. and ralph and an older brother uh -huh. all right uh, you have an older brother and how is he married my my brother is married with Two sons right. and one and of four them, grandchildren. Uh, four. And and one of those sons came in from Atlanta for, for my first. mother's birthday. Oh, how nice! And, and, and both my children live in New York, so they've grown up with my mother very much a part of their lives. So I told you that my son re is a filmmaker, and he recently incorporated a film company 
that he named lovely Louise pictures in honor oh, of my mother. That is the nice, were you just so moved? I was so flattered, I can't begin to tell you. And he gave me a great big plaque, you know, explaining this whole thing, With which the, Lynn, Lynn hung in my sunroom. It's the, you oh. know, incorporation papers with the name of the company. That is so probably, I mean, you can't. What, what we, better gift? I was gonna say, what better gift? And right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe that he could think of something for someone. I mean, you've been, uh, 109 is so mind boggling. When we went to dinner and Lynn and I have known each other from exercise. Right, She's right. much better oh. than me. <laughs> and um, I saw Lynn and I was so excited. And she and I are talking, you're talking to Brad. And he, and he said, you look so nice. Uh, what's the occasion? And you said, well, we're starting to celebrate <laughs> for my birthday. And Brad said, what birthday? When you told him, uh, he got out his phone. He's, he, uh, you know, yeah, he right. was just blown. Well, that's how people react to it. So I've had to adjust to that. He said, let me Google this. Are you the oldest living person? <laughs> and, you know, it's funny. When I visit my mother at the Osborne, everyone comes up to me to rave about my mother and tell me about my mother as if I don't know her. <laughs> but, but you know, I think it's interesting. I lost my husband in 2015, right. and he young. was relatively young. He was 61 years old. And who would have thought that I would lose my young husband and have ha still have my mother in my life? That's and she was really a tremendous support for me because I had never really had a major loss before. Yeah. And it was very, very difficult time in my life. And my, who, you know, you can only sort of be weepy and down with your friends for so long. So my mother was a real support to me during that period. And I think it was scary for her. She had never seen me like that. Wow. And do, do, do you have any special words for those people looking, watching out there? Do you get up happy? Do you sleep? Do you? I sleep very erratically. Very frequently, I'm up at 3 o'clock in oh, the morning and can't go back to sleep. <laughs> I'm up at 4.30. You can call me. <laughs> Wait a second, so you sleep erratically, but... I fall asleep at night in front of the TV. I think that's my best, deepest sleep. <laughs> and then I go to bed and I think, how am I going to be able to go to sleep? But I do. Wow. But I don't sleep too many hours because I have already slept one or two hours in front of the, the TV. television. <laughs> my, my brother's wife says, Eileen says, if you turn on the TV, all the Levies will be asleep because yeah. we all fall asleep. It happened, remember, right, when we were, were in Atlanta once. <laughs> Everybody. You were yeah. all asleep. And do you have a favorite television show? Uh, yes. What do you love? The Young and the Restless. Oh, I, oh my God. So you watch the... Um, For how many years? The soap. 40 odd years. Uh, Susie, uh, Susie Fisher does that too. Oh, She's really? always done. Wow. 40 years. Okay. So you've, you've, you've gone through... How many, oh my God, must have been so many deaths and births. <laughs> of course. And, and um, what about news? Do you watch the news? Oh, sure, a lot. Does it make you nervous? Annoyed. Annoyed, me too, okay. Anxious. Yeah. Dubious. Yeah. What, what, would, what would be better? What, what do you think we could do that's better? I mean, there's so much disagreement and hate. Look, all the professionals can't come up with an idea. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. I, I, I wish we could learn to do just what we're doing. Talk to each other, understand that we're, most of us are, are, are very much more alike than we are different. Of course. And, you know, and it's funny that you say that because um, Ralph, my brother, her son, um, is a is a, an attorney and uh, very well known in Atlanta for his legal work. And he was recently asked to speak somewhere on just that subject, learning how to 
talk to one another, which has become a real problem because the country's so divided. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've lived from Taft. Taft was the president when you were born in 1910, Ten. Right. which is so mind-boggling. Um, you've lived through so many presidents. Did you have some president that you were really fond of? Roosevelt. Roosevelt. He was a hero. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. And and what what about your grandchildren? Are you fearful about the future? I'm so fearful for the great grandchildren, really. Yeah. Because I don't know what this country's going to. The future. End up doing. Yeah, yeah. I think we all feel that kind of anxiety. And there are people who are studying how to live on the moon. I think that's going to be... You know, <laughs> maybe we should all take a little... Uh, uh, right, that's very funny. I mean, I, I get it. I understand. You know, we have just like two minutes left. And I must tell you, I've... I, uh, it went by so fast. I, can't I know. Even, I was I, wondering. I, I can't even imagine. But I, uh, you know, I'm, I, I ask about your. Do you have a favorite movie? Do you still go to the movies? No, I don't. You yes, know. I took you to a movie recently in Pelham. We went to the movies in Pelham recently. Oh, that, that was quite a while ago. But I would like to watch them on sixty-seven. But. We're both watching together, and so it's mostly the, you yeah, know, I'm CNN. A, yeah, CNN. Oh, <laughs> I mostly got, got it. Yeah, what you're saying is... She likes the old movies. You like the old movies, uh, Turner. But there are yeah. movies every day at the Osborne, and if oh. I have nothing else to do, you I can go always down. go to a movie. Which is terrific. Yeah. Uh, but you're so busy, you have <laughs> so many other things to do. Right. And I, I just... it. it, it it's not, it, it's not so much your age, it's your attitude mm -hmm. and your... Well, that's one thing that I have told people when they ask me how I account for it. I think attitude is terribly important. And, and you have a... a she's a very... I was going to say, you're not a, a negative person. No, she's a very, very positive person, and she's always made family... A priority. I remember mm. always hearing "blood is thicker than water" when <laughs> right. I was growing up. Oh, so really? she, yeah. So she's really been a real support to all of us. I mean, she's the matriarch of the right. family. I would definitely say <laughs> the queen bee. Yeah. There's no <laughs> doubt about it, right? You know, it's um, it's it gives me hope for the future because you you. To have it so together and to be um, pleased to, I mean, you were so kind. We had to cancel one, and you showed up again. So I wish you every wonderful thing this year. Thank you, you so health very much. And happiness. And here, this is and from Lucy cookie. and Leo. You're going to have to have I'm a cookie. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> and all of you out there, thank you for watching. We should all take Louise Levy's advice and have a wonderful life. Goodbye, see you next time.